proceeding further uh, as we did uh, this example using the rows, but uh, there is some intervals where we cannot use the law as first we'll have to go through under methods of integration. It's either substitution method, integration by partial fraction, or integration by parts. So under substitution method, we have u substitution. So or t substitution as we can substitute with any variable that we choose to but since we're used to you let's use your substitution so you also have to go to substitution so we can start with the, the first one your substitution so under your substitution uh, which means we are substituting with the variable yeah. so either our integral is given in a form of quotient of two functions or product of two functions but we just have to relate the relationship between the derivative uh, of one function and the other function without being derived so it just uh, depends on what type of form of the function we given for example let's take you into integrate the mean of x divided by x dx so you use your substitution here whereby we'll have to let the u to be lin x so since you changed a u to lin x it means you also have to change the x and to do that is to differentiate u with respect to x so we'll get the u over the x is given by 1 over x which is the derivative of lin of x so proceeding further you are going to make the x the subject so which means you get this as x to you so it's a matter of you uh, substituting now where you see the x you put u and where you see the x you put x to you so which means the integral of lean x over x dx can be written as the integral of u over x multiplied by x du. So in this case, you can see x cancel out x. So we have transformed this integral into a simple integral where we can use the law. So that's what the use of u substitution does. So proceeding further, we can we know here we can apply the power rule for integration. So this is to be u squared over two. So since we are solving this one, we can substitute back our u, which is lean of x. So which means here we are just leaving lean of x all squared over two plus c, and this will be our final answer using u substitute. So it's all about you understanding instead of creaming. So you can consider the second example that will do trick substitution. So the second one, suppose you need to integrate 3 to the power sine inverse of x divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. So in here, you are going to let sine inverse of x to be your u. So you are going to let u to be the sine inverse of x. So which means the derivative of u with respect to x is nothing but 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So if you are going to make the x the subject, it will be nothing but the square root of 1 minus x squared all multiplied by du. So we can see how uh, we are transforming this integral through u substitution. So it's not a hard thing, it's a method of substituting. So therefore, this integral that we are looking for of 3 to the power sine inverse of x all divided by 
the square root of y minus x squared dx can be written as the integral where we see sine inverse of x will put you as i said this one we didn't affect it it's still the same then here we'll put the square root of y minus x squared then to you so if we can check carefully this is the same as the integral of 3 to the power u to you so since this part is going to cancel out as you can see and we have this one uh, from those laws if i may recall is it was on number five the last one that when you integrate a, a to the power x you will get your answer as a to the power x over mean a so this one since your a now is three so i'll get three to the power u over lean three so what is your u your u is what it's a sign inverse of x so which means my final answer in this case is 3 to the power sine inverse of x over ln 3 plus a constant and that's how we do our u substitution so it's a matter of you you understanding so let's consider trigonometric u substitution so here these three triangles are very much important if you can see in the first triangle that our e which is a constant is our i put in most our x is our opposite and square root of a squared minus f squared is our adjacent so in this case uh, we can see that the sign of u is nothing but x over a that's why when we see anything of this form in our integral we're allowed to let x to be a sine u so this is on the first one so here on the second diagram we can see what's going on now adjacent side is a opposite side is x then i put in use just the square root of a squared plus x squared so whenever we see the the nth root of a squared plus x squared we can let uh, x to be a tan u so since we know that here our tan u is nothing but x over a so we just need x the subject that's why we're allowed to let this so for the third one this one as you can see our a is still the adjacent side but right now our x is the i go to use then whenever we see something like the square root of x squared minus a squared we can let x to be a sec u so in this case you can see carefully here that uh, what's going on we're having the if we, we recall cos of u can be written as a over x so if we are about to make x the subject will get to here so that's why we use this so whenever we see this so that's how this uh, trick substitution works so you just have to understand while we're doing more examples so suppose proceeding with trick substitution let's consider this one suppose we to integrate x over x squared plus 4x plus 5 to x so in this case, we'll have to first here complete the square. And remember, completing the square, we're going to halve the coefficient of x to square into subtract by the same thing. So it's more like it is zero to 2 square minus 2 square. So in this case, if you can check this part, is the same as x squared plus 4, x plus 4 can be written as x plus 2 all squared. So since this is negative 2 square plus 5, it's negative 4 plus 5, which is one here so since we are applying trick substitution the one that we can satisfy here is this one so in this case you can treat our uh, x plus 2 as our new x so in other words i will say x plus 2 equals to y so for this condition to be successful 
we don't care about what is x as long as it's in this form. So in this case, instead of x, we are using x plus 2 equals to a times u, which is your y equals to a times u. So where your a, a squared is 1, so which means your a is 1. That's why since I know that x plus 2 is times u, then I can write x as times u minus 2. So we know that x depends on u, so we differentiate x with respect to u, then we get x. Where do you? So we proceed on, then make the x the subject, we get sex squared u to u. So, method of substituting. So, remember this and this, we show that they are equal by completing the square. So, when we see x, we just put tan u minus 2. And when we see x plus 2, we just put tan u. So, this denominator becomes tan squared u plus 1. So, multiply by your dx, which is sex squared u du. So, since we know sex squared u is the same as 1 plus times squared u from identity, so these two can cancel each other. I'm left with the integral of tan u minus 2. So, by difference, I'm allowed to split this into integral of tan u du minus integral of 2 du. So we know the integral of 2 du is just 2 u, but for the integral of tan u du, we'll have to apply substitution. So since we already used u, we'll have to use t. But before, let's just uh, place this, this tan u by its identity, which is sin u over cos of u to you. Then what can we do here? It means we can let t to be cos of u. So if t is cos of u, so which means the derivative of t with respect to u is negative sine u. And so making du the subject, I'm going to get negative dt over sine u. So it's a matter of me substituting. So what is the integral of tan u du? The integral of tan u du will be nothing but the integral of sine u divided by t multiplied by negative dt over sin u. So this is nothing but negative the integral of 1 over t dt. So this which is the same as negative ln of t. And if I may recall u t is cos of u, so the integral of x over x squared plus 4x plus 5 dx is the same as the integral of tan u du, which is nothing but negative ln of cos u minus to you. So what's important now is just to replace cos u and u. And to do that, it means we need our diagram. We need our diagram. So from our diagram, we can write u. So here, the hypotenuse, it's x plus 2 squared plus 1. So the opposite is x, the adjacent is y. So we can see that here, what is cos u? Cos u is adjacent over hypotenuse. So let me write it here that you can see it. Cos u is 1 over square root of x plus 2 all square plus 1. So what is u? We know very much well that x is 
32 minus 2. So which means x plus 2 is 32. So this tells us that our u is nothing but tan inverse of x plus 2. So we can just have a substitute here. So this integral of ours is the same as so negatively then what is cos u? 1 over square root of x plus 2 square plus 1 minus 2 tan inverse x plus 2. So these we know very much well that it can be written as lean of square root x2 x plus 2 all square plus 1 minus 2 tan inverse of x plus 2. So our final answer would be 1 over 2 the lean of all x plus 2 squared plus 1 minus 2 tan inverse of x plus 2 plus the constant and we are done. So it's all about the matter of applying the laws. So you can look at it carefully and try to digest it. Keep on practicing. That's how these things you'll know them.